How my loves. Whew. Y'all. 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 Your girl had a bobby. Girl had a bobby. Your girl had a bobby. And in this moment, God sent me this scripture and I'm going to share it with you all because I don't know who else may be heartbroken. Okay. The scripture is Psalm 144. Is 144 and 7. Send thy hand from above, rid me and deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strange children whose mouth speak vanity and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a... I can't pronounce that. I can't pronounce that. And an instrument of 10 strings will I sing praises unto thee. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings who delivereth David his servant from the hurtful sword. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speak of vanity. And their right hand is the right hand of falsehood. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. That our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. That our garners may be full according to all manner of store that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets. Okay. That um, our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in, no going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is that people that is in no, in such a case. Yeah, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. So, as I was sitting there talking to God, 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 as I was sitting in my quiet place with my Lord, with my Father, with my Lord, with my Father, He spoke to me. And He was basically saying, you know, He would prefer for you to be um, happy. Okay, and, and that's just like what it is, you know, and the last message, you know, I, it, it hurt, like the message hurts. It hurts to find out that your person has cheated on you. It hurts to find out that they have um, defiled your marriage. It hurts to find out they have defiled the temple. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. But I feel like God is saying that he would prefer for you to be um, happy. Because if somebody is a habitual cheater, they refuse to stop cheating. They refuse, they refuse, they refuse. You will never be happy in that marriage unless you don't love them. Like, and that's just, that's all I can say. And even I'm thinking back to the story that um, this Uber driver was telling me. And, you know, obviously I don't know her name and I would not put her name out there. But she was just telling me that she uh, started having this like like a little fling with this guy that she met online and after a divorce of hers and she just wanted to have some fun. And eventually she started catching feelings for him. She started looking into his life, finding out little information about him. And she, you know, it got to a point to where her feelings were being hurt. So I just feel like God is saying in reality, when it's love, it's kind of like, there is no way that you, I, I just feel like God says he wants his children to be happy. He wants his children to be happy. And even if it's a situation like that, you know, this woman was um, in a position of a mistress. She had no idea this man was married. She had no idea he had a family. And when she fell in love with him, she started kind of looking into his information and she found out that he was going on vacations with his family. He was doing this with his wife. She started, and it's kind of like, it made her feel some kind of way. And I'm saying that to say, you know, regardless to what position you in, when it come down to it, when somebody is having an affair and somebody insists on having an affair and they insist on being promiscuous and they insist on cheating, like you will literally drive yourself insane trying to catch them. And then when you do, you'll drive yourself insane trying to convince them to stop. And then you drive yourself insane trying to make sure that it's true that they did stop. And I just feel like God is saying, you deserve peace. You deserve peace. You deserve peace. How can you possibly have happy children and, and there's no peace in the house? And, you know, this is somebody that will like, like, 
if this is the male in a situation, the, the, you know, he's probably walking around screaming, hollering, I want peace. I need peace. You supposed to be my peace. You supposed to be my peace. Meanwhile, he is driving his wife insane. He's driving her crazy. She don't have peace. How is she going to give you peace? And she don't have peace. She can't, she's stressed out trying to figure out why in the world is he not interested in me? Why in the world is he acting like this? Why is this going on? Why is that going on? I don't understand. I don't understand. Whole time, his, his mind is occupied by somebody else. And I just feel like um, that affects the children because the children are trying to figure out why are parents always arguing? Now the children, they go to school and they always fighting with people. They always arguing with people because they think that's normal. And now the children are dysfunctional. The parents dysfunctional, the children dysfunctional. How can either person work? The husband can't work because he's too busy trying to chase after other women or uh, whatever, okay, it's men for some. And and the wife, and, and he can't work because he's busy doing that. So he, he's, he, he's occupied, okay? He, got, he has things to do. And when he's not doing that, he's trying to make sure that he's convincing his wife that he's faithful and he's not doing anything. And he's, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do that, da, 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 da. He don't have time to work. The wife don't have time to work because she's too busy trying to figure out what he's doing. And it's just like, how can a family be prosperous? How? And it's dysfunctional. It's dysfunction. It's dysfunction at its, at its finest, at its fullest, to the fullest extent. God says he does not want his children to be that way. He said, rid, rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children. These people are strange. God says it's strange for somebody to feel like they want to live that way. It's strange for somebody to think, oh, well, God gave me this, but I'm going to go out and I'm going to look for it somewhere else. Okay. I have mine right here, but I don't want mine. I'm going to leave mine here. I said I wanted it. You know, I thought maybe, I don't know. I said I wanted it, but you know what? I'm never mind. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to figure out what's going on over here. I'm going to take this man's person and i know that she probably is for somebody else because mine is right here but i'm gonna take this person because even though she probably for somebody else i'm gonna occupy her time so she can't find her person and then let me go and get to this person and confuse her so she can't find her person and my person oh i'm sorry okay now let me go back and i just god is saying this is strange it is weird it is odd and in reality you know if <laughs> I hear God say highway robbery because this person is stealing other people's spouses. This person is stealing other people's promises. They're stealing other people's destinies. They are occupying these women from being able to find anything happy because they won't be happy. Like, you know, it's, it's not just that the wife and the family is not happy. The side piece is not happy either because the side piece don't have the man undivided attention. The man is too busy trying to make sure his wife is number one and that she doesn't find out that he's cheating. So he can't even give the side piece the time that she won't. Nobody in the situation is happy. It is complete stupidity. Whose mouth speak of vanity. It is vanity. And I just feel like God is saying it is very vain. It is very arrogant. And it is very boastful for them to think that I am so wonderful. I just got to give every, I got to give it to everybody. I, I got to share myself with everybody because everybody want me. Everybody got to want me. And they, if they going to have me. And it's just. And their right hand is the right hand of falsehood because they are lying and they're telling their spouse that they are faithful. But in reality, they are not. More so on their right hand is the right hand of promiscu promiscu uh, uh, promiscuity. I got it out. I got it out. Promiscuity. I'm kind of mad, y'all. But um, low key, high key. Okay, I'm kind of mad. And um, this person is promiscuous. So them saying I am faithful, them saying I am true, them saying I'm only I'm only for you. I'm all yours, baby. It's like, no, 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 I would never do anything like that, baby. They just spin game. God is saying like they lying, they lying, they lying, they lying through their teeth. They lie through their teeth. On their right hand is lies and foolery and promiscuous. Okay, they want to be promiscuous. That's what they want to be. That's what they want to do. And they have more loyalty to being promiscuous than they do to their own wife, their own children, and their own family. And that's the message. And God says, for that reason, he will pull you apart.
And God is saying that this is something that he promised to your forefathers. This is something that he has always promised to his children, that he does not want his children to live a life of misery. And even if it breaks your heart and you have to shed a tear or two and you have to be sad for a second, you have to be sad for a moment. He, he will prefer for you to be sad for a second and for a moment than to be sad for a lifetime. That's the message. Oh, we sheesh. Okay. And I, and I said I was done for the day. I said I was done. I said I was done. And God said, nah. Nah, I fail. You coming back. Okay. That's the message, y'all. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe.